back there. But in 2 Timothy, the second chapter, oh, you want to make this? This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. And I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. And my heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. And I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. Never be the same. In Jesus' name. Uh, second, I mean, uh, Second Timothy, the uh, eighth. Now, I want to just get down to this. I'm going to share a few things with you before you ever get started with my message this morning, uh, just because it's, it's on my heart. Uh, it says, but the word of God cannot be changed. Say, the Word of God cannot be chained. It can't be held out. You can't stop it from going forward. He said, I am willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. Uh, when people come to me about different situations in their life, I don't have a different answer today than I did on another day. I'm not going to one of these days say, if you'll read such and such a book, everything will be all right. This is our book, and he is our Lord, and there's not another solution to that. Uh, there are people that chase riches, drugs, power, all kinds of things in this world, but it's not the answer. And how do we know that they do that? Because the Bible says this right here, there's none that seeketh after me, no, not one. When I hear people say, oh, man. I was looking for God. No, you were too stupid to look for God. You were looking to find something to make you feel better. But God came along and said, I'm the one. I'm the one. Amen? And uh, so at any rate, uh, and then in the Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, it, uh, in the second verse, it says, preach the word of God. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or not. I hear people saying, this day and age, it's not really favorable to speak up. Uh, it may not be favorable, but there's never been a better time to speak up than right now. Uh, did you know that I can talk about any subject uh, without the idea of me attacking somebody? Uh, do you understand that? Like, for instance, the Bible says homosexuality is a sin. That means I can say it's a sin. Amen? Now, I had one guy said, they, they, I had a couple pull me back into the office years ago and said, I don't think you should mention abortion and homosexuality and stuff like that. That just rubs people wrong. You're not going to be able to build the church. Well, please understand this. I don't give a rat's behind about that. I'm going to preach the word. The same people I said, well, is it okay if I talk about lying and stealing and all the other things the Bible talks about? Well, yeah. So you only want me to preach against some sin, but not all sin. Now, you'll have a time that you can change that if you fire me. But as long as I'm still pastor here, I'm going to preach what the Word of God says. Amen? But it says, preach the Word of God, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or not. Now, watch this. There are a lot of people looking not for the Word of God, but for their favorite word. When they come to church, some people come to church saying, I'll feel better if he pats me on my poo-poo and tells everything's going to be all right. Well, some of you, you need to look at your life and say, you know what? Uh, I got saved, but I sure haven't been serving God. As you can get some things turned around. The Word of God helps us with that, doesn't it? Yeah. The Word of God doesn't condemn me. What does it do? It challenges me and strengthens me. Patiently correct. Now, now watch this. If people want to go to a church where nobody ever says anything that rubs them raw, then the pastor cannot correct. Patiently correct. Rebuke and encourage your people with good teaching. Amen? And uh, so that means sometimes you're going to hear something you wish you hadn't heard. 
And uh, it has to be from somebody else because, you know, I'd never do that. But uh, <laughs> preach. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about being servants of God over the next couple of weeks. And what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to touch on humility. Humility. Humility is as far removed from being covered with pride as you can possibly be. Uh, I have seen pride in so many different things today. I recognize it more than I ever have before. When somebody comes and says, uh, 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 I want something, but I want it my way, they're not humble. When I come to God and say, listen, not only am I bringing this need to you, but I am going to instruct you, Lord, in case you don't understand how to work things, how to work it in my life. No. I go to God, and there are times that he, uh, I mean, over and over again, he answers my prayer. But listen, when he answers them, did you know even though he does the best thing for me, it's not always the thing that I wanted him to do? Does that make sense? Well, either I'm going to be humble and let God be God in my life, or I'm going to try to instruct him about what to do. <laughs> I ain't that smart. So I'm not going to instruct him what to do. I'm going to trust him. Uh, many years ago, when I was preaching, uh, somebody actually raised their hand and said, are you talking about putting a demand on God? Well, let me explain. When I talk about demand on God, I'm not telling you to tell him what to do. I'm going to tell you what it is. And I've used this illustration before because it's the best one I can think of. If I turn the radio on at my house, there's not somebody in a station somewhere that goes, Bob has turned on the radio, let's play something. All I've done is make it available so I can hear what's going to come through that radio. But it's always been there. I just now turned on the radio. If I turned a faucet on to get water, there's not somebody at a plant somewhere say, let's give Bob some water. All I did was make it available. I put a demand on that water system when I turned it on, and, be and I believe that, that they're going to send me water. I've done it before. And we'd like to get water. It's a bad thing if your water goes out, you go take a shower, you're stinking like crazy. Not you. I know you work, but you probably never have an odor to you because everything's perfect about you, Philip. But anyway, so, so, so if you go to the No, he works as an electrician. I worked as a, as a pipeliner, and I would come home, and you didn't know this about the Caps family, but the Caps family are face rubbers. Now, I'm going, to explain, I'm going to illustrate it to you. If, we are at a, if, we're, if you're at a family reunion and somebody tells a joke, we're not only laughing, we're bending over laughing, and we're rubbing our face. <laughs> I don't know why. It must be DNA or something. So here I work a pipeline, and, and any well and steel pipe is going to let, let up a lot of black stuff, and I'd be rubbing my face. I'd come home. And Debbie said, your whole face is black. And I would just say, I'm a face rubber. <laughs> My face wouldn't be so black. But I wouldn't say, let, let, let me tell you, there are a lot of things that are in my DNA that are passed down from me. But did you know one of the things that was passed down from me was the sin of Adam? And the only way I can escape from that is receive Jesus as my Savior. So here... At Heart of God Fellowship, we're going to put Jesus number one, and the rest of us follow after that. When people ask me, and they do this, who is really the head of this church? I say Jesus. No, no, I mean other than that. No, Jesus is the head of this church. I'm the pastor. We have teachers and other people in there, but I am the pastor but I'm not the boss. I remember years ago when I found out that I had to pay twice the Social Security of anybody else because they call me self-employed. The government does. So I have to pay self-employment tax. So I went and tried to argue with them. That's a hard, the government's hard to argue with. So I went there and said, now wait a second. How can I be the one in charge and self-employed, 
if I can be fired by the church because I can literally be fired by the church. And they said, well, you can? Yes. Pastors can be fired by their church. I don't plan on jacking up that bad so they send me down the road. But I, I hated that. But I had to submit myself to that. And somebody said, are you going to pay it? Yes, because I'm going to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Now, I was very glad of that because when it came time to draw Social Security, I'm glad I paid something in. But what I'm trying to tell you is that we live our lives and we live them under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will never tell you to rebel. It'll never tell you to do things that are contrary to the Word of God. They won't do that. The only time I have a right to say no to something this government says if what they're telling me to do is contrary to the Word of God. And then uh, we find that same example. I need to get in this sermon today. But anyway, we find this. But God just laid this on my heart. I'm, it's okay I share it, right? But, but, but the thing is, uh, the Holy Spirit only leads me in the paths of righteousness. The Holy Spirit is never leading me to do something that's contrary to the Word of God. Now, when the... When, when the lame man walked at the temple then the, uh, in the book of Acts, then they drew those people forward and said, listen, we, we expressly told you don't preach the name of Jesus, and you did it anyway. And I love the disciples. They didn't say, well, we're not going to submit to anything. You know what they said? Well, you be the judge. Shall we submit to you or submit to God? I thought that was a great answer, wasn't it? And then they said this, if by chance you think that we healed this man by our power, understand we did it through faith and faith in the name of Jesus. I still have faith. I still have faith in the name of Jesus. I love you very much. But don't put your faith in human beings. Put your faith in God. Human beings will always fail. God will never fail. I don't know who that was for, but I better get started my sermon now. Amen. Uh, we're going to be talking about what it is to be a servant of God. And I'm going to talk about humility. Because a lot of people are not very humble in this day and age. I even joke about it. I, I'll tell Debbie, I said, all I've ever wanted is to have my way all the time. She goes, well, that ain't ever going to happen. I know. But I wanted it. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to start right here in John, the fifth chapter, in the 16th verse. This is where Jesus claims to be the Son of God. So I want you to understand, some people think that humility means that you don't speak truth, or that you're not strong, or that you're weak. Jesus was not weak. He was plenty strong. Even at the crucifixion, he said he could have called down a legion of angels to, to, to rescue him. No, he did what the Father told him. So the Jewish leaders began harassing Jesus for breaking the Sabbath rules, but Jesus replied, My Father, my Father never stops working, so why should I? So the Jewish leaders tried all the more to kill him. You mean the answer that they had for him serving his heavenly father was they're going to kill him. Now he's claiming what? That God is his father. He's claimed that he and the father are one. And this really hacks him off. And so now all the more they want to kill him. Let me tell, give you this right now. This, Jesus was the most humble man that ever walked on the earth. And he was crucified. And he always told the truth. Humility does not mean that everything's going, to go, everything's going to go your way. And it doesn't mean that people aren't going to pers persecute you. You can be humble. You can be strong. You don't have to be the, the loudest. More. Are you ready for... How many people would say, anything God wants me to do, I'm going to do? Because that is a massive statement to take on. Anything God wants me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Whatever God wants me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to think what are the pros and cons. If Jesus went like this, I don't mind going to the cross, Father, but I don't want any pain. Well, he couldn't have done it, could he? He experienced horrible pain. 
He was a humble man that submitted himself to the work and the word that his heavenly father gave him. This is a lesson for us. We need to do the same thing. I don't want, I don't want Heart of God's Fellowship to be Bob Capps' church. I don't want Heart of God Fellowship be the thing that spreads all over the place. I want Jesus to be lifted up, and I want G the will of Jesus to be done in this church. Amen? Hallelujah. Speak truth. Servants of God, speak truth. Don't think you need to back off of it. When people are challenging you on a, on a particular subject, come forward and say what you know to be the truth from the Word of God, not your opinion. Opinion are like armpits. Everybody's got a couple and they stink. Oh, I cleaned that up a lot, didn't I? So the Jewish leaders tried all the more to kill him. In addition to disobeying the Sabbath rules, he had spoken of God as his father, thereby making himself equal with God. He was accused, crucified, and all he did was speak the truth. Because he had your well-being in mind, my well-being in mind. I'll tell you something else. When you get inside the Word of God, study the Word and get God deep in your heart, and you get to the place you can, can speak Scripture when people are talking about things, and they know that you know your Scripture because you've studied it. Did you know what they're going to accuse you of? Being arrogant. Well, Bob thinks he's a know-it-all. No, I don't know spit. Well, he thinks all that, he's all that in a bag of chips. No, I'm not. I'm humble enough to note this, that my job is just another job in the church. I'm not the cook, and if you ever tasted anything I tried to cook, you'd be thankful to God for that. <laughs> Leroy here is a good cook. That's why we had him down there cooking at camp. He did a great job. Amen. You can give him a round of applause. Jesus was humble, and he spoke truth, and so he was killed. I, I want you to know, if you're going to be a servant of God, you're going to speak the things that God tells you to speak, not the things that are popular. What are you willing to change? What are you willing to give up to call yourself truly a servant of God? Even in the churches today, people say, I want to help. Here's where I'll help. How about helping where we need help? Be a servant. Amen? Amen? There are six traits of humility, and I'm going to go through them. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 31. If you're going to be a humble servant of God, can I tell you this? You're going to give God the credit for all the things. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in world's eyes or Popular or wealthy when God called you. Next scripture. Instead, God chose those things in the world that the world considers foolish in order to show. Mm. Mm. Mm, Lord Jesus. I will be considered a fool for your service, Lord God. The world thinks I'm a fool. I know that. I know it, Lord. I've had people challenge me. Oh, how can you believe such nonsense out of a book like this? I may look like a fool to them, but I'm not a fool to you, Lord God. The world considers foolish in order to shame those things who think they're wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. You are called by God. Let's go on. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all. I had a man years ago, I said, I feel like I'm nothing. I said, you're in the proper place. You're in the place where you can be used by God. When you, keep, keep, when you, when you stop trying to be 
your own God and you stop trying to come up with your own rule, how are you going to do things? Did you know what? I always pray for betterment for people, but years ago I had a guy that was tied to his money so bad. I know this sounds terrible when I said it. I told him, I said, do whatever you got to do, Lord, to humble this man. If he's got to lose everything he has materially to humble him, that would be better than him being the way he is right now. I can, I can give you examples of how we're caught in the wrong things. I thought the most important thing most of my life was ride a motorcycle. Back then I was tough. Now I just hope I look tough every now and then. But ride a motorcycle, look cool, all that kind of stuff. I told my wife the other day, I said, we go to Sturgeon and come back. I said, I may get rid of some of my big old bikes and go back to just riding some of my little bikes around here. I don't care. My wife said, you won't be cool anymore. I said, I ain't been cool. I missed the chance to be cool when I was a teenager. <laughs> that time has went. I don't think I'll ever stop riding, but I might stop riding these big old heavy things. I mean, you know, Christine is strong enough to hold them up, but I'm getting a place I can't. <laughs> but no, you're not? Okay. We're going all the way to verse 31, aren't we? God chose those things. That, I just read that. Despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to, to nothing what the world considers important. What the world considers important, I don't care about, do you? As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. Salvation is by grace so that we won't boast about it. And I'm glad he wrote that, because we really would. You going to heaven? Yeah, you've seen how good I am. Everybody makes mistakes. I don't care who you are. I, somebody, said, was, somebody told me that was a devout Catholic one time, April. You know, uh, you know what I said? They said, well, I don't think the Pope makes mistakes. I said, does he breathe? Is he alive? then he makes mistakes. Amen? Ain't nobody doesn't make mistakes. Don't be offended. Some of you make more stupid mistakes than I would at my age. But anyway, that's okay. We all make mistakes. <laughs> I get away with too much. Number two, let's go on, well, let's go on down to 31. God has united you with Christ for our benefit. God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. Say, Christ made me right with God. He made us pure and holy. Say, I'm pure and holy. And he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. What else you got to boast at? I'm so good. I had a friend that was really surprised when he came to me and Billy Graham died. He said, well, you know, he's in heaven. Look at all the good he did. I said, ain't nobody in heaven because of the good they did. They're in heaven because of the good Christ did. Amen. We have his righteousness. Our righteousness is still as filthy rags unto the Lord. Amen? Kenny Potter, mighty man of God, good to see you, brother. First Corinthians 4, 7. Dear brothers and sisters, I have used Apollos and myself to illustrate what I've been saying. If you pay attention to what I've quoted from the scriptures, you won't be proud of your leaders, at, uh, 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 one of your leaders at the expense of another. The problem that he had there, some would say, I'm of Paul and I'm of Apollos. And uh, Paul was trying to come against that. What happens with humility? Humility means you get to the place where you're not uplifting anybody but Jesus in your life and you're submitting yourself to Christ and, and not to all these other things that are going on around us. I've even changed some of the things I do. People say, I heard you're a biker. I'm a Christian. Heard you're a pastor. I'm a Christian. I heard you're a father. Yes, I'm a Christian. 
I value my relationship with Christ above every other thing in this world. I don't own anything I wouldn't get rid of. There's nothing that I'm doing I wouldn't stop. When the Lord tells me, so I'm just telling you, when we say God is number one, we need to mean God is number one. He doesn't come second in anything in your life, period. Amen? We have to recognize that every gift we have, what gives you the right to make such a judgment? What do you have that God hasn't given you? Huh. Is that a good question? And if everything you have is from God, why boast as though it were not a gift? Everything you have is a gift from God. Your talents, your abilities, your physical things you have, don't start boasting. If somebody comes up and says, boy, that's really nice this or that, don't go, oh, I know. I'm the man. Pride gets in the way of, of really doing the best we can for God. It really does. You know, when people go like this, they'll say, man, I've just been mad about this, upset about that. Well, welcome to humanity. But now what? Have you went in this position? I'm going to tell you this. And I've had people that have come to visit with me, and they'll say, well, why are we doing that? And I had to do it. The Holy Ghost told me to do it. I said, no, we're not going to stand here or sit here in this chair. We're going to get our knees, and we're going to humble ourselves before the Lord. And we'll recognize that he's God, and we're not. And I don't know how to explain it. I'm going to use April as an example. Come here. I can tell April, I love you, and you're God's best. When she's going through something, if I really have an impact on her, you know what I'm going to say? Let's kneel right here, and we'll kneel together. Does this make sense? No, I want you to get this. When I'm in the place in my life where I think I can work things out, I'm in a dangerous position. I can't work it out. I'm not smart enough to work it out. Does that make sense? Here, I'm going to pray with you right now. We don't care if everybody's in else here, do we? <laughs> Say, dear Lord Jesus, you know the problems I have in my life. Say it. I can't fix them, God. I need your power in my life. I need you to straighten my life out. I, I can't do it. I make wrong decisions, and I'm tired of it. Bless me now with your presence in a mighty, mighty way. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name, I proclaim, Jesus, you are my boss. You're my lover. You're my friend. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me. Amen. I'm getting up slowly. Oh, I, I love you too, hon. When we're going through things, I'm just trying to give an example here. When you're going through things, don't give people to these little pat answers that you have. You don't always have the answer to everything. You can't tell them, well, you need, and I've had people do this. Well, you need to sell your car. You need to do this. You got to do that. You got to buy your house. You got to, they give all the, you know what? I went to a conference one time and the guy stood up, called himself a prophet. And he went like this. I'm not kidding. Those people who know me a long time have heard this before. He stood up and he said, looked at me and pointed, your name shall be Andrew. I said, no, my name's Bob. Your name shall be Andrew. I said, you may think you're hearing from God, but, but I'm Bob. I'm Bob Caps, 
And when I was listening to him, I knew he was trying to pull something, you know what I mean? And I recognized it. And my wife, when she, we first walked in with my wife, my wife was very uh, sensitive to the work of the Spirit. And she, when we first walked in, she goes, that guy's not right. I said, you haven't even heard him yet. But she was right. He was off in left field. We need to get back to doing what God... Don't be afraid to be humble and sensitive to the move of God to grab a hold of somebody rather than just preach them. Don't preach at them. Say, listen, I don't know everything, but I know God does. And get down on your knees and, and humble yourself before the Lord and be an example of that. Amen? Say, all I have is a gift from God. Number three, I want to tell you is that if you're humble, humility recognizes that God really is in charge. Let's go to James 4, 13 through 17. God really is in charge. Now we're going to start out this thing right here. It starts telling you about people who decide, I'm going to go do this, I'm going to go do that. But watch. Look here. You who say, today or tomorrow we're going to go to a certain town and we'll stay there a year, we will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, and then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or do that. Otherwise, you're boasting about your own pretentious plans, and all such boasting is evil. Remember, it's a sin to know what you ought to do and then not to do it. Listen to me. Humility comes into play when I want to do what God wants me to do, and, and, and I am living, living that crucified life. In all the years that I've been in ministry, I can't even tell you how many people, when people come and say, listen, I did this and this, I said, did God tell you to do that? Simple question. Well, I, I, I was looking at things, I thought the best thing, for, no, I didn't say that. I didn't ask you what you thought. Did God tell you to do that? Because when you get to the place you start following God's leading, he'll lead you in places you never thought he would. He might lead you to do things you never thought he would. And I want to tell you something. If he's in charge, it'll be better for you. Amen? How much are we willing to do that? Jesus listened to the Father. Jesus listened. How do I know that people are are getting mixed up like this. You know, it also says in James that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The churches are doing that today. Did you know that? Unstable. Why are they unstable? Well, I'm going to go to your church as long as you tell me what I want to hear. Well, I ain't going to do that. I want you to be challenged to live a better life. We've had people that I've, that I've met that don't understand the, the patch that we wear on the back that is a church patch. And so they'll decide they want to wear another patch. I had a very good friend of mine that said, listen, I'd really like you to join uh, 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 our ride club. I said, we're not a ride club. We're a church. And that's a church patch on the back of our back, and we're not changing it. It's going to remain the same. Not everything that sounds good is God. Amen? Amen? I talked to a guy the other day that told me, he said, well, we, we, uh, we started wearing a patch, and we designed our own patch, all that kind of stuff. So I said, did you go down to the four sterols and gooses and get an okay? Why would I do that? I don't care what they think. Well, then you're in trouble. So we went down there and got an okay. You know what I loved about it? They said, we know what you do, Bob. We're not worried about you. 
Then he asked me one question. Will you police your own group? Yes, it's a church. We'll police our own group. We pulled a couple of patches over the years when people quit acting like they know God and start doing their own thing. Amen? Amen. God is in charge. He's in charge. Number four, humility cherishes the gospel of Jesus Christ. Since God chose you, in Colossians 3.13, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, when you hear scriptures like that, you need to say it. You need to plant to yourself. Say, God chose me to be the person he loves. You need to get the place you say those things. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you've got to forgive others. Amen? What do we call that? Humility. When you get to the end of yourself and you decide, I'm going to act the way that God wants me to act. Number five, humility serves others. When you're a humble person, you're going to find out that you, you care more about serving others, serving God and serving others than you do serving yourself. Philippians 2, 3 through 8. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Yeah. Need to think of others being better than yourself. Is he telling you not to love yourself? He's not saying that. How do we know that? Because the Bible says you've got to love your neighbor as yourself. If you hate yourself, you won't love them, will you? God doesn't want you to hate yourself. What he wants you to do is, is, is realize that you're to live a crucified life and allow the Holy Ghost to guide you in everything that you do. In August, I'll be going up to Sturgis. They say, well, you kind of lay things aside when you go up there or you ain't been with me. I will tell you this. I had to change the way I was handling that for a while. Because it used to be we'd go up there, we'd camp out. I'd leave Debbie at the campground. I'd go on the streets of Sturgis at night, handing out tracts and ministering to people. One day I got back. She goes, do me a favor and quit calling this vacation if you're going to leave me every night. So I made her a deal. I said, we'll never go to Sturgis and make it a ministry function. We'll primarily make it vacation. And I'll get plenty of opportunities to talk to people anyway. You know why? I rattle off all the time. Yeah. Don't look out for only your own interest, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave, was born Mm. as a human being when he appeared in human form he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross look at our Lord look at our Lord look at him Put Mark 10, 45 up there, would you? I don't think I gave that to you. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. We're going to be talking about the church in the next few weeks here. This is probably one of the biggest things you'll ever do to allow God to do this inside of you that will impact the people around you. Because people don't care. 
If you don't have any care for them, they're not going to care for you. They don't want to hear what you have to say. Did you know that people are primarily selfish? How many people know that we're primarily selfish? I mean, we really are. I mean, this is why it's such a hard... That's the reason that we're told to deny self. Because self doesn't always want things that are good. But we need to deny self and pick up our cross and follow Jesus. Amen? For even the Son of Man. So Jesus called them together and said... You know that the rulers in this world lorded over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. It's an amazing how many people you can get. If I wanted to go like this, said, would you preach at the church? We'd get several people stand up and say, yeah, I do that. But some of them don't know what it is to be servants. Sandy and Chris Cotton, for I don't know how long, has come here and cleaned this church. Has done it forever. And you know why? They have a servant's heart. Having a servant's heart is so much different than trying to make people your servant. You know, you see the difference? One time I was at a, uh, I went down to minister to Kenneth Copeland's in 1991. And there was a big motorcycle rally going on there. And then I got on stage and ministry. But I'll tell you, there was a, uh, I went across, I won't even mention the name, but it was a motorcycle ministry and they had it all roped off. So I happened to bump into one of the ropes and said, don't, don't, don't come around here. This, this is our campground. I wanted to go, are you saved at all? <laughs> and, uh, and they took this horrible attitude. And I watched him and he said, I said, what's going on over there? Oh, we're having our, our prospects clean our bikes. I said, well, I, you, aren't you a Christian group? Yeah. Then how about this? If you want to be like Jesus, he made himself servants. Why don't you take the prospects and why don't you clean their bikes? They didn't receive that very, very well, but what I told them was true. If I'm going to look like Jesus, I'm going to look like more of a servant than the other people around me. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. So that sixth verse, we just went through that. It's, we recognize, servanthood recognize what true greatness is. True greatness isn't to know that you can lord yourself over somebody, but true greatness is learning how to serve. One time I went and ministered at a church and this guy came up with a pan and a towel and he said, please allow me to wash your feet. It is actually an ordinance inside the church of God, Cleveland, uh, Anderson, Indiana. And so anyway, so I sat down. It was the most humbling experience of my life to have that man wash my feet. And Jesus did this. He, did, he, he washed the disciples' feet. We need to practice humility. Instead of blowing our own horn, we need to get to a place where we're, we're, we're serving others in such a way that they'll see Jesus through us. Here's what he said in Matthew, wasn't it? We do these good works so that other people will see the good works we do and will glorify Jesus for it. Amen? I don't know. You receive that from the pastor this morning? Now, if you came in here this morning and you're less in a wonderful mood, I want you to come forward real quick. This won't take long. You recognize your mood's not good, Sherry. And then, <laughs> come on, if you came up here and your attitude has been less than wonderful and you know you got a problem with that, I'm going to show you the simplest way to to come through things like that. You can no longer, I'm going to stand here with me. You can, you can no longer, here, here's, what, here's my, what my being upset with me is about. It's my proclaiming to the world that how I feel is more important than anything else. We don't recognize it, but that's really what it is. I, I ain't feeling good. And by golly, you're going to know it. 
No. I'm going to show you the way. Come on up here. Right now. I'm not the only one. Yeah. You're not the only one. I like picking on you, but that's not what I'm doing today. Here's what I want you to do. This seems so simple. And it is simple, but it is the answer to coming out of yourself. When your attitude's terrible, lift up your hands. And now in your own words, you don't have to sing a song, but you can, but just praise him now. Just praise him. Oh, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I bless your name, Lord God. Oh, you called us, Lord God. Thank you for calling us and empowering us. Thank you for all that you do for us. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord God, that you have come into the midst of our mess and you have rescued us. You are everything. You are everything. You are everything, oh God. You are everything. For all these in this circle right now, Lord God, as they praise you and they pray, I thank you that you're doing a healing work in all of our hearts. In all of our hearts right now, we have chosen to praise you because you chose us to be your children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm a teacher. I'm a condescent. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Less of me and more of thee, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm say. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am yours. I am yours. I've been bought with life so precious. I am new. I'm brand new in you. My Jesus, I am yours, I am yours, you hold all my life in your hands, and when I feel your spirit calling me, I'll follow because I am yours. Hallelujah. She is here, my son, that he may get you she. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What am I keeping? Hallelujah. 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 Have your way, mighty God. Hallelujah. Pour all of your spirit, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank oh, you, you pulled us out of the miry clay. Hallelujah. You put our feet upon the solid rock. Thank you, Lord God. Thank Jesus, you. we love you. Jesus. Jesus. We glorify you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, folks, prayer 
and praising God will bring you right out of the stuff that you're going through. You know how often that'll happen? Every time you do it. Takes the focus that you have on that you have on you and puts it on God. Our rescuer. Our Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now what you saw in just a little bit example here. Imagine you're going through something, and rather than go on Facebook and complain, you thought, hey, I can talk to God. And two or three are gathered in my name. Jesus said, there I am also, that if you agree on touching any one thing, you can have it from the Father in heaven. Amen? Say, I am, I am. the church. The living body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You received that from the pastor this morning? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. I lay that Bible down, then I go searching for it. See? You ever do that? Maybe we ought to put a Bible on every chair and then we could always have one close. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, you got it on your phone, don't you? You know, uh, I'm going to lift up Lindsay Perkins. Man, she makes a cake like you wouldn't believe. She, she made me a cake for my birthday, which I couldn't eat all of it because there's a lot of sweet, but it was absolutely wonderful. If you need any baked goods like that, I mean, you just make cakes, though. You don't make breads and stuff, do you? You can? We'll see her. Make her busy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you sense the presence of the Holy Spirit here this morning? I walked into this church one time after being on vacation. And Debbie said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to go to the church. She said, we just got home. I know. But I want to go to my church. And that particular time, it didn't happen every time, but that particular time I walked down this aisle and I just fell on my face before God and started talking to him and worshiping him. Can I tell you, there's no sweeter presence than the presence of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, we're going to take communion together. You know, I said something to somebody one time, and afterwards, when I mentioned it to the church, they said, do you really feel that way? Yeah, I do. And here's what it is. Year, years ago, when I overate all the time, and one day I was praying, I said, Lord, why am I overeating all the time? And the answer from the Lord is not one I wanted. He said, because when it comes to food, food is more important to you than me. When the Lord told me that, I realized that I knew what I was doing wrong, but I was doing it because I wanted it. That's what we're talking about, dying to self. Hallelujah. Everything that's harmful in your life, if you're doing it, to him that knoweth to do right, doeth it not to him it is sin. If you're doing things that are harmful and against God's word, Remember, at least in that instance, that thing means more to you than being obedient to God. Get rid of it. Hallelujah. Do what? Maurice? Yeah. Huh? Maurice. Yeah. 
And Father, right now we pray for, right now for Maurice. We thank you and praise you for him, Lord. We thank you. It was in a motorcycle accident, but I thank you that motorcycle accidents are something that you were aware of. And I thank you that if he's alive right now, it's because you have preserved his life. So, we, Father, we pray right now for healing of that body. We thank you that you guide the doctors and nurses and all that. But after they've done everything, the only way somebody can be healed is if you're involved. So we thank you for the healing of that body right now. In Jesus' name, amen. When we first heard about it, Leroy was sitting across from me. I said, well, that's it. I guess we've got to quit riding motorcycles. He said, no, we won't. I said, okay. <laughs> We're not stopping that, are we? No. Now, if everybody had a W like yours, it gets out of things, don't it? It gets out of the way. Well, I took a little bit longer this morning. Was that okay? We can preach all day long and I'll stay here and listen to Oh, me. that's sweet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, would you guys ride with me no matter what I rode? Yeah. If I started riding my dad's old Beamer around or something like that, it'd be okay. As long as it's not a Honda, listen to him. What are we going to do with these people? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I got on my dad's 750 one time, was riding it. The guy said, Pastor, you look like you're picking on it. No, I, I just... I said, you're looking at a man that's crossed the country on a Vespa motor scooter when I was 15. So somebody said, how did you do that? I said, what is it you can't do when you're 15? I ain't doing it now. I love you, Lord Jesus. We pray that you'd bless these elements we partake, representing, Lord God, the broken body that brings us physical healing and the blood that was shed that washes us of our sin. Let's raise up. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. It is for my healing, my spouse's healing, my children's healing. Thank you that by your stripes, by the beatings you bore, by the lashes which fell on your back, we are completely healed. I believe and I receive. I have no idea what Chris is doing over there, but <laughs> let's raise the cup. Thank you, Jesus, for the new covenant cut in your blood. Your blood has brought me forgiveness. Wash me from every sin. I thank you that your blood has made me righteous. And as I drink, I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which is preservation, healing, wholeness, and prosperity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, buddy. She said when she leaves Bible study, she's got this feeling in her heart like it's just going to burst. Well, and she said, and Sheila said, when she did you, did, study, did you uh, thank her that it I hasn't said, burst? God is trying to t show you how much he loves her. Okay, now I understand what you were doing over there. I thought you were having some kind of attack or something. Well, you know the drill. The Bible says with this tongue, oftentimes we bless God, but we curse man who was really made in God's image. My brethren, it ought not be so. Father, I just speak a blessing on everyone here. Business, home, social, physical, mental, and spiritual. Pour out your love, your power, your grace, your spirit in such a mighty way. Then the rest of the world sees them. They'll say, surely these people have been with Jesus. 